officially good news. I think a lot of people were holding their breath after this was announced, but it's official. The United States and Russia have pulled off the largest prisoner exchange since the Cold War. In December 2022, there was a prisoner exchange uh, with Brittany Griner, um, and they sent back an arms trafficker the United States, but that was a one-for-one kind of deal, if I'm remembering correctly. This included a lot of uh, Americans. Russia released, I think, 16 people in total. And the Americans that returned home included Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, uh, former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, who has been detained since 2018, and a Russian-American journalist Alsu uh, Kormashiva, uh, and there were other actually like Russian activists who had been imprisoned for their political activism who were a part of this exchange or the release of deal as well. The hardest part of this was reportedly uh, Putin demanding that they get back this guy, Vadim Krasikov. We'll get to him in a second. But here is uh, Vice President Harris and Biden greeting the Americans released on the tarmac in Maryland late last night. So for the podcast audience, you see them walking up. And here's Paul Whelan shaking Biden's hand. There's Evan Gershkovich of the journal. There's Harris hugging. And here he embraces his uh, mother, apparently, which I can't even imagine what that must feel like. Uh, and then this is uh, Alsu Kermasheva, who's, a, a, I guess, an ed- a radio editor here. She reunites with her family. There's nothing beyond our capacity to react together. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. Yes. Wow. Nothing beyond our capacity except for a ceasefire and an end to a genocide, but... Well, I'm going to put that aside for a second. I, I mean, I like when he said when we act together, I would not limit that to just like us, the United States, but maybe uh, us as a world uh, uh, seeking solutions through diplomacy, as opposed to things that say uh, feed the bottom line of our uh, defense contractors. Like th- this is great. And this also hopefully portends a shift towards maybe trying to uh, negotiate an end to the U- conflict in Ukraine. I think that it may. And- And a lot of experts, I think, are seeing this sign of cooling tensions as something that could be good for a peace deal in Ukraine, which now that war has uh, gone into its third year at this point. And what was encouraging was the Wall Street Journal, who obviously has the inside track on this because of the fact that one of their reporters was uh, detained in Russia and was a part of this exchange. They reported here that Kamala Harris reportedly played an integral role in these negotiations. I mentioned earlier Vadim Krasikov, who was one of the prisoners that was holding this up the most because Krasikov had been convicted in Germany of killing a former uh, Chechen rebel in in Berlin in a park. And uh, I guess Putin has some loyalty to this person. So it was holding things up because in Germany they... Obviously, they, the guy was a murderer. They didn't want to give him up. And I think the Biden, same reason like the Republicans here don't want any sort of uh, appeasement, they call it. That's right. the only lesson that any of those, uh, frankly, fascist, modern fascists took from World War Two is don't appease the enemy. Exactly. And 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 yet, you know, uh, Trump, we can get to that later. But he was like saying, oh, none of this would have happened. No one would even have gotten taken under my watch. Well, that that Marine Whelan was was captured in Russia in 2018. But here's what the journal reports. Vice President Kamala Harris played a role in negotiations with allies to secure the prisoner swap deal. Harris met with both German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Slovenian Prime Minister Robert Golob separately in intimate settings during the Munich Security Conference in February to urge both leaders to push the deal through, according to a White House official. Harris's meeting with Scholz was particularly critical to securing the exchange because releasing Krasikov was a key Russian demand. The two first had normal bilateral uh, two first had a normal 
bilateral meeting before Harris asked Scholes to stay back for a, quote, restricted bilateral. The official said Harris asked everyone to leave except Scholes and one aide on each side. They had a back and forth about how to best move forward about that. But ultimately, she was pressing Scholes to take action on this, the official said. Harris met Scholes previously on s- several occasions and had a good working relationship with him, the official said. That is, quote, part of the reason she was able to have a really good, frank conversation with him. Um, that is actually extremely encouraging and raises some questions. Like, if this was happening in February, were there some questions about Biden's ability to continue to be president during that time? Was she taking on the larger, more active role because of those fears? How long were we aware of these fears? I mean, a month later was when she kind of was the first administration official to come out and say ceasefire for Gaza, which reportedly the administration watered down. So she was making her own moves, I think, for her own political future here quite smartly. But what I also like is that she was willing to have conversations and be diplomatic, because in the at the end of the day, this is what we should be engendering in foreign policy, especially when Democrats are in office. Diplomacy, 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 not war. Yeah. And so the fact that she was able to do this, I think, and then we have a report in the, in the New York Times that came out saying like, oh, a lot of Ukrainians want a peace deal now. And it's like, OK, why is the Times publishing this now ahead of this prisoner exchange? It's because they want information out there to the public that a peace deal could be beginning to be negotiated, hopefully, and that there are Ukrainians who are war weary. I mean, same in Russia. They're conscripting people, men in like their 50s and and I think up to 60 at this point. It's not good. It's not good. So if the Harris administration, if she wins, has more of this posture, I'll definitely take it. This is a selling point for a generic Democrat. I mean, and which means like not Biden, where in the last um, months of his presence, he's talking about how strong he kept NATO. But, you know, yeah. diplomacy, like Obama, the Iran deal. And Katrina Vanden Heuvel had a very interesting uh, interview on the um, in, at Democracy Now!, where she talked about how there's a feeling within inside Russia. And you won't hear this from either the Maddow sect or the, um, the Trump is actually anti-imperialist sect, um, that Putin might want actually Kamala instead of Trump because of the uh, ability to do sort of consistent business as opposed to the whims of maybe uh, a sort of self-dealing a maybe opportunistic guy <laughs> yeah. who is also has the neocons um definitely like yeah. we're in his first and then we'll be in his second um and you know also we'd have to be remiss to say kamala was also on another call uh, recently which is uh, biden pledging uh, israel's right to def- most recent right to defend itself as it you know bombs people within iran and stuff like that so we uh, diplomacy is good and that's a reason for um kamala over <laughs> trump if anybody needed one, um, but also we need to see this applied. And we, we have the Jake Sullivan cr- tears. It's like, can we have some tears for the families of Gazans too, please? Could, well, right. I mean, that's all. I that's a whole nother wormhole, right? And and but but I agree with you on your perception of it. Vermont Ben writes in Ukraine has always wanted peace. They did not start this conflict at all. There was a peace summit in June. They wanted another one. They want another one by November. No one said they started this conflict. I want to be clear. This was an act of Russian aggression and imperial war started by them. But Ukraine has been the recipient of a lot, a lot, a lot of weapons from the United States. And it's a problem if people start having to be conscripted into fighting it. And I know Russia does it, too. That's not to say it, but it's just Russia can actually has a capacity to do that more than Ukraine does. And facts have to be facts. Like this is the this, I, I wanted a different side to win the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. The fact is that like there's a certain point where you have to uh, stop letting people be killed in war conditions and try to fight the peace. And like you let it go on too far, then a lot of people die. That could be helping try to fight whatever the crappy peace that gets settled is and this has nothing to do with i mean i'm not speaking about ukraine i don't know enough about their internal politics to say something about this but i do know a lot about our internal politics and we saw hillary clinton come out after russia invaded illegally and um immorally and say that this could be a real opportunity to weaken vladimir putin and his regime And we have to be clear eyed that there are forces within the kind of status quo national security blob that see that as an opportunity as well. But if Harris and Biden, too, right, 
are interested more in diplomacy and negotiations um, to kind of end the bloodshed and the f and the instability. After three years, I think that that is a good sign, especially if we're hearing this again from the journal, which has intimate knowledge of what happened here because of Gershowitz. So um, good news. Good news on that front. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.